Welcome to Tomorrow Today, where we take an inside look at how weather is impacting organizations around the world and the unique ways they're combating the impact. Brought to you by Tomorrow.io, the world's leading weather intelligence and climate adaptation platform. All right. Hi, Dan. Hey, Ruth. How are we doing? Good. Thanks for joining me for this conversation on, uh, on how organizations solve for weather with predictive analytics and automated workflows. Yeah, happy to be here. Um, I'm just gonna get started and we can jump in. So tell me, why is weather such a big challenge for businesses? It's pretty interesting. So tomorrow, we've been around for six years and from what we've seen, businesses, organizations, governments, I mean, everyone is thinking about weather in an old school way, mm -hmm. which is what's the forecast and how accurate is the forecast? And that's definitely one part of, of the conversation, but we work with so many different industries on, on the enterprise side of the house. Mm -hmm. uh, we work with brands like Fox Sports and Uber and Delta. And don't get me wrong, website accuracy is absolutely critical. And it's one thing that we are doing a lot of work around to solve and improve mm -hmm. everything from sending our own satellites to space and running our own models in the cloud and a bunch of other stuff. Mm -hmm. But a bigger part is around trying to solve for this predictive analytics and weather workflows to actually solve once and for all for weather not just try and only follow the forecast. Think about the impact it has on, on the business, trying to get ahead of it and actually solve for weather as a company so that it's not something that's always a constant risk for you. Mm -hmm. It's something that you understand the impact, you understand your protocols and how you actually adapt as, as an organization. What are some examples of how weather impacts teams and their operations? It's a good example. Let's just take airlines as an example. Yeah. Think about a, a snowy day, high winds, and there's might be ice. Mm -hmm. An airline has to de-ice their airplanes. Mm -hmm. You can't de-ice your airplanes if the winds are above 40 miles an hour or something like that. Yeah. And so if an airline doesn't know that there's going to be high winds in their area in one particular morning, afternoon, or night, then they start to back up with delays and they can't de-ice their planes. And we know that you know the, the cost of every minute an airline is delayed is something like 75 bucks per minute. Mm -hmm. You have upset customers, you have upset workers, things get delayed, you miss flights, you miss connecting flights, all those types of things. When, if you just know in advance, hey, there's gonna be really high winds that morning mm -hmm. and the impact of it's gonna be, you won't be able to de-ice your planes. You now know that two days in advance, a day in advance, you can update your flight times, you can get your planes out earlier, you can de-ice them all at once. That's an example, and we see it applied to every other, you know, industry that we work with, whether it's trucking or rail, it applies everywhere. So are there, besides trucking rail and airlines, what other industries do you think are most affected by this? We see it across the, the energy space, across the uh, aviation space, we see it in mining, we see it in sports and outdoors, mm -hmm. we see it in technology, on demand, construction, automotive, uh, really runs the gamut. Um, you just think maritime, cargo. Yeah, it's, it's almost every industry that's, mm -hmm. that's impacted. How are they, how, are, how have they tried to solve for weather before? What are they doing right now that isn't working for them? So typically the way it's worked in the past is that you get your weather forecast from some type of a public source, mm -hmm. usually from government. And the first thing an organization tries to do is think about how am I going to consume or how am I going to understand or get the forecast as a, a business? When you're a small company, it might not be so hard, but when you're talking about hundreds thousands, tens of thousands of employees spread all across the world. And you think how many different weather sources are being looked at, mm -hmm. how many different free apps, how many different web pages on a desktop, how many different paid solutions people are using. You have so many different sources of truth that are coming in and they're all competing against one, one another. Yeah. And, and so, so one, one, you have conflicting forecasts that are coming in. Mm -hmm. But then trying to think about what's the impact of that forecast on X, whether it might be, oh, is, is the railroad at risk of being delayed? Is the uh, airplane at risk of not being able to be de-iced? Are you know, the on-demand delivery workers going to be at risk on the road because mm -hmm. of crazy weather conditions? While that's going to impact you is really hard to know, and it's really hard to know in, in real time. So usually people try and manually interpret mm -hmm. what the weather is going to be like that de-icing example I just gave, it's really hard, okay? 40 mile an hour winds is when a plane can't de-ice. From the hours of whatever, nine to one, when is the wind gonna be above 40? What if it drops to 38? What should I do when, when? And so you're trying to understand what do I do about this weather? And then the last part is even if you got the weather, 
understand how it's going to impact you, then it's about communication. So who do you have to tell and through what system? I, I'm texting my coworkers, we're slacking, we're emailing, we're yelling at, at each other across the room. There's so many different ways to just implement confusion. And when you don't have one single source of truth and an easy way to communicate, then problems arise all over the place. So that's how businesses and organizations have really tried to solve for weather in the past. It's always been this very chaotic, confusing thing that just consistently puts them at risk and gives them a headache. And it's kind of why the you know running joke of, of weather is such a popular topic because it, it's impossible to solve for. Mm-hmm. Um, and it's always something that surprises us. So how should they be thinking of solving this? Because it's not just about the weather, it's about their like their analytics and their workflows, right? Yeah. So the first thing is having predictive analytics where you understand the impact of the weather on your specific organization. Mm -hmm. So it doesn't necessarily matter that it's going to be windy. It matters that your train is at risk of being derailed at this time, at this mile marker on this day. Yeah. That's what you really need to know. The reason is because of high winds that might be above, you know, X miles an hour and the train is traveling at a certain weight at a certain grade, something like that. Fine. Mm-hmm. But just knowing the business or the organizational risk, first and foremost, is really what matters. Once you have your predictive analytics in place, then great. We now have a single source of weather truth where everyone can look. So if you have offices around the country or around the world, anyone in the organization has access to it and everyone can go to the exact same place, see the exact same forecast and see the exact same impact on the organization. Mm -hmm. Um, Even just having access to that as an an organization has been something that most people have not had before. Usually the weather truth lives in one part of the organization Mm -hmm. and it's kind of disseminated on down. It's almost like a, a game of telephone. But as we all know with that, the message starts to lose its truth or Mm -hmm. starts to change its meaning as it goes from person to person. So once you have a single source of weather truth for everyone, then it's around having actionable insights because again, you don't want to manually try and interpret what does this weather forecast mean for me? Mm -hmm. You want to know, great, stop the train, speed up the train, at risk of this or that. Mm -hmm. Everything can be saved in sort of a, a very nice, easy to do type of way. And then the last part is having automated alerts and documentation sent out. So if you do need to stop the trains, then great. Alerts go out to the people that need to actually do that. Their bosses, their management, their uh, peers are all alerted. And once the task has been completed, there's full documentation that it had actually happened. So people can kind of have peace of mind and know that everything is fully documented in their system. That's awesome. Do you have a specific story in mind of someone who has implemented something like this or anything in mind? I think when you're talking about railroad, it's a really mm-hmm. good one. Yeah. There was, I can't say the name of the road, but it was a big one. Mm-hmm. There was one we were talking with and they were sort of doing weather the old way, mm-hmm. with the way that I, I just described. And we started talking to them about, here's how you could automate your analytics and think about workflows. And as we started to look at their particular rail schedule over the course of the week, we said, hey, did you know that you know Tuesday morning at nine, you guys run your trains on this particular route, you're going to get derailed. Mm -hmm. And they kind of looked at the way they were doing things and said, no, it's not going to happen. We're going to be fine. And like, all right, we have another meeting with you tomorrow. So we'll we'll keep watching and we'll let you know what we think tomorrow. We go on the next day and we told them again, we told them again. And finally they listened to us and they ended up not running the trains and they adjusted their schedule. We looked back at the weather that actually happened and had they run their train when they were going to, they would have for sure had a derailment. They acknowledged it, we acknowledged it. And it was kind of the first aha moment of interesting. It's great that, you know, there's new technologies and tomorrow I can better forecast weather, but it's much more around getting that information and the what to do and when out to all, all the stakeholders. So, okay, we were talking about predictive analytics. What are predictive predictive analytics for weather? It can really be anything that impacts your organization. So the way I think about predictive analytics, first and foremost, is around like your operating protocols. Mm-hmm. So let's change up industries, board board of aviation and, <laughs> and rail, right? Let's think about trucking as an mm-hmm. example. So there are certain analytics or there are certain protocols that a trucking company is going to want to think about. Mm -hmm. One is, you know, what are the routes that we're going to be on? 
Is there going to be any weather that's going to be impacting those routes? Should I think about uh, any type of delays or ETAs? Mm -hmm. If I'm transporting goods that need to stay at a certain temperature or can only stay in the truck for a certain amount of time, are we at risk of any of the goods or things going bad uh, or being ruined? If the temperature in the truck gets above a certain point is what I'm going to be transporting going to get ruined? You know, there's a couple of different of those types of things. And so you start by building uh, an analytics dashboard where you can start to say, great, here are the things that I care about given the way that I operate. And then you have an automated system in place to start to show you when those analytics or when those protocols are, are at risk. Yeah. So another thing I think we talked about was weather workflow. How do predictive analytics come into those workflows? So then with the workflow, the nice thing about it is that you have a very nice path to operate as an organization yeah. where, okay, you've now understood the weather forecast that's coming. It's been automatically interpreted for you. You already have a decision that's made what to do and when. That's then been communicated out to all of the stakeholders. And once the action has been taken to either mitigate risk from the weather or to get ahead of the weather, the, all of the people that need to know have been alerted that great, the task has been complete, it's done. It's also been saved in the system so that we have full record of it. Mm -hmm. That to us is a way to solve for the weather. So again, Yes, the forecast has a, a part of it, but it's mm -hmm. much more about understanding the end-to-end -end impact of weather mm -hmm. and solving for what that workflow can actually look like and having it all automated in, in one place. So it's kind of, you build it once, you set the behavior with your team, and then it's done moving forward. That sounds really cool. What advice would you give to executives who are looking to improve their weather workflows? I think, first of all, I would just Stop thinking about the weather and the way that you've thought about it for the mm -hmm. past 5, 10, 20 beyond years. It's not about how do we just get a better forecast or am I looking for a better weather provider? Mm -hmm. Because let's be honest, most businesses, they look at the weather and for the most part, they just kind of feel like I don't need another weather provider. I need more data. I need the right data that's going to influence decisions and mm -hmm. is going to automate things. So my advice would be to stop thinking about weather in the traditional way and more think about whether it's something that can be solved through a workflow mm -hmm. and something that can actually become an asset to you uh, from an operational sense. Yeah. Weather and climate is not going away. If anything, it's getting more volatile, it's getting more crazy. And you can rest assured that there's actually systems that you can put in place that can alleviate a lot of the concern and a lot of the unnecessary risk right now that organizations are taking every day. That makes sense. It's good advice. Thank you so much, Dan. You've answered all my questions. All right. Sounds good. Thanks for joining us for this latest discussion. We hope you found it valuable. Interested in seeing weather intelligence in action? Visit us at tomorrow.io forward slash get a demo.